Jamie from Inky and Scrappy. Welcome back. If you are a subscriber, if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel grow. I did a little bit of house cleaning. Well, not really spring cleaning. I took out the Goo Gone and I Goo Goned all of my scissors. They now don't have that adhesive residue on them. That makes me annoyed. Takes a little bit of time, but you know, once it's done, it's done. And yes, I have a few scissors and I can never find them anyways. I brought out the magic picture changer for this one. I've used it maybe twice before this card. I will say this. I thought I had the magic picture changer add on. I do not. At least I couldn't find it. I'm pretty sure I don't have it. I was thinking I had it, but I'm pretty sure this is what I did the last time was just kind of use a smaller square die and a bigger picture frame and then like cover it up. And so I do run into some problems. I should have gone with the smaller square that I had originally thought about using, but I was thinking it was going to be too small. It probably would have been the right size. So you will see how I adjust for that later on. So I am using some Nina Classic Crest Super Smooth 80 pound cardstock here. I, it's not my favorite to color on, but I have a hard time using my Express It for this type of thing because it's a little bit lighter weight than that 80 pound, I think. And it's expensive, so I like to use it when I can use a lot of it for image coloring, that sort of thing. So I do use the Nina Solar White Classic Crest 80 pound, super smooth, not just the smooth. I like the super smooth better for ink blending, and so that's what I use. I'm pretty sure the smooth is probably just fine. But this way I can, you know, use that magic picture changer die on it and not feel like I'm spending a lot of, or wasting a lot of expressive cardstock. I don't use the magic picture changer a whole lot. I think a part of that is just because it requires stamp masking, which if you know how I do my stamp masking, you would say you're a dork because all I do is stamp the image on Avery removable adhesive sheets or label sheets and run it through the Brother Scan and Cut on the line. So it's, I think it's just the thought of having to mask things. I don't know. I'm goofy. There are my colors that I'm pulling from. It's an old color skew. So if you are interested in those, they are on my blog at inkyandscrappy.com. There is a separate page for all of my color combos. And there are the markers that I ended up using. I do have my marker conversion chart done. So it takes my 200 set of fine nib Ohuhu markers and then the new 320 set and color matches them. So like I'm using number 44 here it'll tell you what that conversion is in the newer set, if that's something you're interested in. I also included the 72 set of brush nibs that I have on my conversion chart as well, and the pastels. I'm pretty sure all of them probably coordinate somewhere along the line. I just don't know all of them. So if you are interested in that, it is actually up on my Etsy shop because I could not get the PDF to load onto my blog. So being it's an Etsy, there is a small fee only because Etsy charges me a small fee. So it's basically you paying for that fee. I won't make anything. Etsy is going to make it. So if you are interested in that, it is available to you. Have at it. Um, and, and if you find color matches for the other ones and want me to update it, I will do that feel free to email me at inkyandscrappy at gmail.com. Other than that, I am working on doing my masks here because I cut that inside one and I kind of had to be careful because I really only did two taco masks. I could have done four or six or whatever, but I, you know, wasn't planning on doing three cards when I started, or at least when I started my taco stamps. And I was, you know, like, well, if I'm going to do these, I should do a bunch because 
I tend to be horrible at sending out mail. Why you ask? You know, because this one maybe was supposed to go out the beginning of March, and I think it might have made it there. No, but didn't. I think it made it there in April. So it was a little after her birthday month. <clears throat> yeah, I was about a month late. Yeah, but I actually sent it in the mail, so I guess I'm impressed with myself. That I got that far. I really suck at mailing things. I don't know. Great at making cards. Not so great at sending them out. I'm trying to get better. Every year I say I'm trying to get better. It's, yeah. It never works that way. So I am going with, so when I colored them, I did one and then I did the opposite of it. So the full taco and then the bit off taco all at the same time. So my colors coordinate. So my lettuce is my lettuce, my cheese is my cheese on each of them. So they coordinate well. And then of course, when I ink blended, I made sure that I ink blended them. So they were close when it came to color matching. So the one got a little dark. It, you know, it happens. No big deal. I just made that one dark. It's, I might've grabbed the wrong ink pad when I was blending. It happens. So for the magic picture changer, you need to fold in those little skinny sides there. I did just, I just grabbed whatever straight edge was closest to me. Of course, it was hanging on the wall. So I used the one for my Misty. And then for this part, I am bringing in some one eighth inch score tape to add on to the little flaps. I did see Jessica Squirrel added glue to hers. And I thought that's probably a lot easier than trying to get that score tape in there. So it probably will be something I do next time. <clears throat> this one might have been Jessica Squirrel's card. Just saying. So I am adding in, and I haven't done this one. So this is me remembering how this one goes. So it does move a little rough at first. So I do go back in and remember that using the powder bag really does help make it move a lot smoother. So here's me trying to add or make, I shall say, make my magic picture changer add-on because I don't actually have it. Will I probably go out and buy the actual magic picture changer die add-on? Probably because this was a little annoying and you'll see what I mean in a little bit here. So I'm going to add in that top flap thing that helps to, it it's, works as a stopper and as the pull tab feature. And I'm going to do all three of these at the same time. So I tried to, at this point, only include one of everything. But at this point, I was just needing, you know, this probably took me three or four days to get done. So I was finally just sitting down. I'm like, I'm just going to get all of them done all at once. So here's where I add that powder. And yes, it works a lot better. So I bring in my actual powder bag. So it's just a homemade bag with baby powder in it that just works a lot faster than the powder tool. So I'm just working them, making sure that that powder gets in and through. And then I will bring in all of my die cut pieces here. So here is where I realize I should have used the smaller square. And so only putting adhesive on the top and the bottom of that magic picture changer because I don't want to get in the way of the moving parts here. And so I am going to end up coming in and bringing in the frame that comes with the magic picture changer to cover up those side pieces there. So I will do all of my tops here. And then while I have it this far, I am going to also figure out my bottom or my tablecloth, I guess. When I originally made this one, I did it as a tablecloth. And so that was kind of the idea behind that patterned plaid. And I am using some older papers. It's a paperback. Um, die cuts. I don't even know where it's from. I want to say it's maybe die cuts with the view. It was like a little boy paperback. So it was like, I want to say, um, it's got like the ink resist on it or the clear embossed 
raised parts on some of them. And so the one that I'm currently using, I think was like the circus theme one. I just liked it because it was bright and bold and reminded me of a fiesta. And so to add my picture frame on here, I am just doing some little teeny tiny dots of glue around the frame part just so it just touches and I don't want to get any adhesive on that magic picture changer. And then I'm going to bring in my tablecloth here and then I will just add this onto the card base. So if you see that the little squares there are like, have that gloss, like an emboss resist or the embossing powder over the top, like the clear is kind of, so it kind of has a little bit of texture to it. So I have all of those done. And then I'm bringing in an old Fisker set that says hand over the wine and no one gets hurt. And, you know, hand over the taco and no one gets hurt. So I'm going to stamp that on three different colors of cardstock here, heat embossing and setting as I go. And this way I can color coordinate with that background paper. And then I will cut these into strips because obviously I don't need the word wine in there. And then I did cut out the word taco from a combination of Oliver Stitched and Henry's ABCs. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to do, so I ended up pulling out all the letters from both of them to do taco. And so I just ran them through the die cut machine one time with each color. So once with taco in red and once with taco in green. And so I ended up with four of them. I probably should have made four cards instead of three because I had enough pieces to make four when it came to my sentiment. And so now I was just playing with placement. Um, hmm. Do I like my placement? I don't know which one I like the most, to be honest. And I wasn't overly in love with that green taco on top of that plaid. It just doesn't stick out very well to me. And so that's why that one only got done one time. And then, of course, because I needed a little something on my taco that got crunched on. Obviously somebody got hurt in this situation. <clears throat> it was the taco. So I brought in the crunch from the absolutely awesome stamp set. And then I brought in the eek from the tiny Halloween stamp set. You could have used the R from the pirate stamp set as well, but I decided the little, the little words were a little bit better. And of course, yes, it's always nerve wracking when you decide to stamp on your finished card. <sighs> um, I did actually do okay. I do use the VersaFine Onyx Black Ink when I do decide to get a little, you know, let me bite my fingernails and stamp on my finished card. And so, yeah, if, if you're paying attention here, you'll see somebody had inky fingers. It happens. And of course, the one that I had only done one crunch, I decided it needed to say crunch, crunch, because, you know, you can't just crunch once, you gotta crunch twice. And so there are my finished cards. I'm just playing with them, making sure everything is moving after everything is adhered and dried, <sighs> has to not have any issues with my mechanisms. And here's where I noticed my inky fingers got the C on top of and so uh, I was kind of frustrated with myself and I walked away from it. And then of course I was like, I'm done. And then I came back after I was all done and put the taco with the green on top. So it covers up that inky finger smudge. Anyways, I did include the inside and the inside actually says, let's talk about your birthday. Let's talk about it. And then, sorry, I was late for your birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. So there are my finished cards. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have an amazing day. Keep getting inky. Bye.